Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TZ Teaches. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the final piece of information that you need in order to paint the best models that you can. And that is the symmetry and project paint settings. Symmetry only works if you have a perfectly symmetrical model, but we do in this case. So let's go ahead and turn this on. What symmetry allows me to do if I mirror across the x-axis is it allows me to paint in the ear here. And actually, let's change our curve back to the, uh, the original default instead of what it was for the last video. And if we paint here in the ear, it's actually mimicking the same paint on this side. Now, that's a bad paint job, but what this is going to allow me to do, since I have a completely symmetrical model, is paint on only half of the model and get an identical version on the other side. And that's going to save a lot of time in the long run. But like I said, this only works if you have completely identical models. So as you're making your models, either use a mirror modifier or make sure that everything is symmetrical and this option will work for you. So let's take a minute now and talk about the projection paint settings. All right, for projection paint, there's only one thing that I find super important, and that is the bleed over. So if we look here on our 2D uh, image, and we zoom in really close, you can actually see there's some bleed over from where the faces were in an earlier video where we painted to where it actually exists. And right now, that setting is set to two pixels. Sometimes though, based on the way that an object is unwrapped, the two pixel uh, bleed isn't enough to accurately cover the entire area. And so what you have to do is increase that bleed section in order to do that so that your base texture doesn't come through. So if you increase this, and then let's say we paint on uh, the face itself again, what will happen is now we'll see a much bigger bleed over area where we painted versus where it was originally. And you can kind of see that. Now I'm gonna undo that, but that just should give you the point. You also have two options here for occlude and back face culling. And really, if we turn these off, this is what it's gonna allow us to do. If we draw a line here, and we look at the back, we can see that it's now not stopping our paint. So if you turn those off on accident and you're wondering why you're painting through your model, it's because occlude and back face culling are turned off. Then we also have dithering, which affects the, the pixel by pixel change in color on your UV map. So you can increase that or leave it at zero. It's up to you. Uh, you might not see a need for it depending on how big your map is and how your UVs are laid out. But just know that uh, the dithering option is here as well. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and this concludes our series on texturing in Blender 2.8 for the time being. Uh, the next video will be a video walkthrough of texturing the sword from our last course, end of the course walkthrough. So we'll go over how to unwrap and do all of that stuff in the next video. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and I hope to see you there.